The Unfiltered by Jade. Jade. Welcome to The Unfiltered by Jade, where we educate, empower, and entertain. Feel free to like, share, subscribe, download, donate, and make everybody know who this. Beats by RB Records. Shopping assistance, your style, your budget. Our services include online and local shopping for individuals and businesses, personal shopping, purchasing of company and office supplies, importing and exporting small packages across Jamaica and worldwide, and helping you find unique gifts and items for all events and occasions. Contact us at 876-919-5195 or shopping assistance 2015 at gmail.com shopping assistance your style your budget welcome to the unfiltered by jade today we have with us here two guests and they are well i'm excited to talk to them about this topic which is giving back to our community and i know they are also excited to speak about this so before we even go into it i'm going to ask them to introduce themselves to you hi thank you so much jade for having us um on your podcast um it is truly amazing work that you are doing uh, my name is camilla and i am the public relations coordinator for HWPL Georgia, which is an international um, peace NGO here in Atlanta. So today we'll be sharing a little bit more about our initiative. So I'm very excited to be here as well. Okay, thank you. And I also am very thrilled and excited and thankful to Jade for inviting us to into the show and to the recording. My name is Marion. I'm also a coordinator for HWPL Georgia too. Okay, awesome. I'm excited to have you guys here with us. So we're going to jump right into it. I want you guys to tell us about your organization, the purpose, and your why. Yes. Thank you so much for asking. So a lot of people, when we introduce HWPL, the very first thing um, they ask is, what does HWPL stand for? Mm -hmm. Ultimately, it is heavenly culture to create a world of peace without war, um, world peace, and restoration of light, ultimately having the citizens at the world of the center. So our purpose is to ultimately enhance civil society and create active members who participate in the peace work. So a lot of people always say that actually peace is not possible. Yeah, That's exactly. why, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? So, you know, when it comes to actually making peace possible, HWPL, we have uh, specific initiatives and specific goals that we work towards each year, um, which if I can explain a little bit, we have our international law department, our religious department, um, as well as peace education, international peace youth group, and then the PR department to promote um, the various forms of activities being done all across the world. But I wanted to just explain a little bit about one of the initiatives, which is peace education. Mm -hmm. And this one is very important because I would say that I myself am peace education. If you yourself are not peace, how would you be able to give peace education? So what peace is directly related with is directly related with love. Fighting and killing, all of that is actually because of lack of love. If all people have love, then isn't peace inside love? So who should be the first teachers of the children in this world? It's actually our family. So that's why we would say peace firm, first and foremost even begins in the family. Just as there's the sun, moon, and the stars in the sky, in the earth, um, it's when these orders are sustained, that's when we can create a conflict-free and united peace to be fulfilled. Mm 
So that's why our peace education team is working together to cultivate talents and in individuals with characters and values of peace. So we're really working right to create leaders who can become peace messengers in the global community and also spread that culture of peace. Interesting. Um, so I I have a question about that. Yes. Um, so for peace, do can there really be peace, especially let me touch on religious purposes or in societal norms? Can there ever truly be peace on that? Because if persons are not seen eye to eye religious purpose or eye to eye re societal cultures, how are we ever going to have peace? Because you say peace begins with love. We have to have love. That's where peace starts from. I can love my neighbor, um, but I may not agree with their religion or their culture, et cetera, what they're doing. Me not agreeing with it can cause conflict. Um, so how do we change that? How do we really go about changing that? Because it seems as if to have peace, there has to be a kind of sacrifice on either parts, on somebody's parts, to gain that peace that we're craving for. So can you explain that to me, please? Yes, I will follow up with this. And I, I'm very glad that you asked that question because that is actually one of the parts that we also thought about. So if I can explain a little bit about our religious department. So it is more so an interfaith alliance of religious leaders who come together to share discussion on understanding of the dialogue and scripture. Because like you mentioned, a lot of the conflicts that can happen is due to a lot of misunderstandings. And all across the world, we find that a lot of religious misunderstandings can cause um, one of the most conflicts right within society. So that's mm -hmm. why it's actually important. And what HWPL is doing is hosting um, WARP offices, which is the World Alliance of Religion Peace Offices, to allow all types of people from different backgrounds to come together to have that conversation, have that dialogue so that we can actually get to a point in which we understand each other's cultures and each other's norms. Now, just to explain a little bit, um, we'll share a little bit about DPCW a little bit later on, but there we also have the Article 9, um, which talks about the freedom of religion. Um, so ultimately, as a society, we have that responsibility to, of course, carry out our own norms and our own religions, but not only that, being able to understand the persons next to you, religious and norms, so that we can create that respect within the community. And it's not something that's going to be done overnight right. um, or just with, within one region. So that's why we're continuously um, working to spread these type of warp offices all throughout the different countries and even um, on a state and local level as well. Okay, interesting. Can you can you expound please on heavenly culture? I'm seeing heavenly culture, and I want to know is that a replica of what we believe heaven should be? What is a heavenly culture? Yeah, so I can actually explain about what heavenly culture is. So heavenly culture ultimately is first just as like the heavens as the ones who actually give us the rain and the water and the air. So that's why it's also called heavenly culture. Therefore, we can be the people who actually create that world of peace without such war in that process. And many people can think heavenly culture is just like a religious organization, but Pill is actually not a religious organization at that part because with us being associated with the United Nations, then that wouldn't let us be in the same cultivated status. However, we're doing that work like the heavens to actually bring everyone together as they provide water, rain, and air for people. Same thing we want to do with peace. Mm. Understood. Got it. We started heavy. But I want <laughs> to know, <laughs> why Atlanta? I know, I think, because I've done some research on you guys, and I realize you're all over, but why Atlanta this time? Um, As Atlanta is the epicenter for peace, if you really think about it, there's so much fertile soil for the seed of peace to grow, especially considering the civil rights movements and histories like Martin Luther King, Andrew Young, John Lewis, and many others who continue the legacy it has all shaped our history today when we actually look back and see it. So it opens up a legacy now that we can continue to bring and even um, continue to nourish through this new era of peace that Ishopil is trying to complete. 
So mm -hmm. even like in recent news, you know, there's a lot of uh, violence that's happening. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's why Atlanta has actual appeal at this point. because we're trying to create more active members of society who can participate in this piece work to subdue that work. Okay. Okay. And um, it's not really because, you know, Atlanta is probably undeserved community, etc. You have some parts in Atlanta with that. Um, do you think that you can reach those parts also? Because sometimes it's harder to reach parts where some people don't want peace if they're hungry. Yeah, you know absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that's actually one of the things that we see a lot too now in the community, definitely uh, under unprivileged places too in that process. But with one of our main initiatives, like we mentioned earlier in this uh, declaration, a peace and cessation award that I'll talk about later is that we have a culture of peace in that process with article number 10 and thinking about that culture of peace, even by us looking at such norms and how we can better help our neighbors or help the people who are underprivileged by us creating that mindset and helping them that would actually bring a more resolution for them in that process. So I think it's not just like us just saying, let's be peaceful, but actually by us helping out those neighborhoods, by us doing these things with other people, it all creates us to have peace. And like we mentioned peace education, love. It's by me loving this other person, me helping people can also bring that culture of peace to that person and help them grow too in that same process as it would someone who doesn't have that. Okay, understood. What are some of the ventures and what is sustainable peace? Because I, I, I have read about that also. Yes. Um, so sustainable peace, it actually goes along with, you know, what we were mentioning in terms of making peace possible, because what we're doing is not just saying, let's have peace, let's love each other. But there needs to be those um, actions, right, that needs to be put forth to make peace a reality. That's why um, sustainable peace is ultimately something that should be understood as a goal and a process with activities um, aimed at the prevention of conflict. So HWPL, we have been conducting um, different activities and programs um, to develop peace as a global culture and norm um, through civic participation. So each year, we actually have a peace walk um, in all over the world to, to actually um, commemorate the uh, May 25th, which was the Declaration of World Peace. And also, like I mentioned, we have the different warp offices and also peace camps that are held by our peace education team, as well as our, our interfaith religious team. Um, and also the March 14th event um, is where we commemorate the Declaration of um, Peace and Cessation of War as well. Um, so these are just some of the different activities that we are taking um, in order to sustain peace and also work towards um, prevention of conflict as well. Okay, all right. And do people normally generally support the, the march? That is what we are working towards. Last okay. year, we had about 70 people come okay. to the uh, uh, Liberty Plaza. Um, so, you know, we're just looking to want to grow even more and more. Expand so people, you know, hear about peace as well. Okay. Okay. Understood. All right. Tell us about DPCW, which for persons who don't know what, was, what we have been speaking about, which is the Declaration of World Peace and Cessation of War. Yes. So the DPCW is very... Thinking about it, it's very intriguing, but according to our release, recently released book, we have Peace Journalism Studies, which is in 2022, and it's volume number one. And the United Nations uses peacekeeping institutions as its primary means, while the Declaration of Peace and Cessation of War, DPCW, in turn focuses on conflict prevention. So that is not only to like settle and stop conflicts, but it's also to prevent war. So HOPL, along with world-renowned international law experts and scholars from various fields proclaimed the DPCW on March 14, 2016, with the aim of creating an internationally legally binding instrument that would bring a complete end to the causes of war and armed conflict. And the DPCW ultimately consists of 10 articles and 38 clauses, which is a comprehensive documentation of the principles of peace that are required in this current era through an inclusive approach to ban, prevent, and lastly, resolve the conflicts. So the DPCW ultimately aims to ensure the realization of true peace and that's its value can be taught to the next generation that will lead the global community through the key principles of ensuring freedom of religion, 
ethnic diversity from the military, security, and politics, and also spreading a culture of peace through peace education. And that's just a little bit about the DPCW, but ultimately, yes, that's what it aims to complete. Okay, okay. What kind of impact do you want to actually see? Not just in Atlanta, but all over the world. Yes. Well, you know, one thing that um, we truly believe is that if a country has solid internal peace, then democracy and civil society is all developing. So the kind of impact that we are wanting to see is, you know, first and foremost, having citizens be aware of the peace activities and, you know, becoming active in pushing peace forward. So, you know, actually our chairman, Lee, um, he's, you know, the organizer of HWPL. He's actually 92 years old, but, you know, is still traveling, you know, trying to spread the message of peace. Um, but one of the things that he mentioned is that adopting this declaration ensures achieving a world of safety and peace. Not only um, is it for citizen support, but when the heads of state become aware of this declaration, then how can they go against this message? Going against the declaration of peace and cessation of war is going against peace. Therefore, if a head of states rejects this declaration, then wouldn't their future descendants question the leader's stance on morality? So this is what he mentioned. This is what he mentioned. But the reason why we are truly doing this work of peace is so that we can really be able to show support for true peace in our communities. There has been a lot of gun violence and a lot of shootings and a lot of uh, police brutality that's been going on in our communities for the past few years. And it seems that there is no solution. But what we need to do is become those active members, right, who are actually pushing um, this type of peace forward. And we really want all people to become informed citizens, right, with the applicable tools to actually push peace forward, right, for the future generations and for us as well. All right. So with what you have um, read, um, question. So if I'm not... I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to get an understanding so persons out there, listeners out there can also understand, yes. you know, the, the, the peace movement. Right. Mm -hmm. If it is that we don't choose peace, <laughs> leaders do not choose peace, mm -hmm. are there repercussions to it? Because if it is that you bring it to the leaders and they say, no, we don't want this, because if it is that, for instance, um, removing guns from communities, removing guns from different places, taking away so, you know, people don't have these to use on each other as weapons. Oh, then yeah. people are going to say, how do they protect themselves? But we're trying to not use it to bring peace so that you don't have to protect yourself from anything. That's not, that, that to me is not a reality. Mm -hmm. um, so if persons do not want to choose peace because they want to protect themselves and they want to have their guns and, and they want to have their weapons or they don't want to speak to certain groups, religious group, or they don't want to speak to certain families because of different societal understandings or cultures. What are the repercussions to it? Apart from our generations looking back at us and saying, hey, they didn't want to choose peace. Is there any repercussions to it? So I think that's a very good question because ultimately when it comes to doing the work of peace, there are going to be people who don't truly believe or see the vision and peace. Mm -hmm. And that's something we understand. It's something that we know. But ultimately, the way that this world is moving forward is that if we stay in the same position and conducting things the way that we have been, then there is really no future for humanity if we just kill ourselves, right? If we just okay. don't pay attention to the solutions that are possible and that we can be able to implement. So the reason for peace, right, is sustaining life, respecting human life, and trying to make that life as enjoyable and as harmonious as possible here on this earth. So if a person doesn't choose peace, then that is to their own. Um, okay. Because it's ultimately, right, um, the sustaining of life. But if that is something that um, 
that is not seen as valuable on a global scale, mm -hmm. then what we just have to do is move forward with the people who do see the potential in peace and make it possible with the ones who want peace. Okay. Yes. Understood. Um, so Camila and Marian, how is it that we can be involved? How can persons get involved? Oh, yes. So we ask that listeners can get connected to Eshopil by being able to go through our website and connect through Eshopil registration, which is eshopil.us. But we also, for those who like social media too, we are on Instagram and Twitter at Eshopil Georgia. And we also have an active peace podcast that is accessible on Spotify and SoundCloud. It's called SOS World Peace Podcast, where we discuss current peace topics from a local level and also internationally. And we even have episodes where we explain about the DPCW. So we would love for all of the listeners to get connected to hear more about the works of peace and actually understand that document a lot more. Okay, and what are some of the ventures that they can get involved in, apart from the Peace March? Some yes. of the... Oh, yes, Adventures that they can get in. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yes. Um, so actually, um, in this year, we are volunteering with the organization um, FREE, which is Friends of Refugees of Education and Empowerment. Um, they're located in Clarkston, Georgia. And each month this year, we are going to visit um, each of the refugees to help with the clothing drive, food drive, hygiene drive, um, and back to school supplies. Um, as well as helping with any other um, things that they need. But this will be a monthly project for us. So if anyone is wanting to volunteer or even give back to the refugee community, this is something that we are conducting and are really open to um, inviting anyone who would also like to help um, with the refugee community as well. Okay, awesome. Are there any last words before we wrap it up? Yes. Um, thank you so much <laughs> for um, inviting us and, you know, uh, being able to hear about the word of peace. Um, I truly hope and uh, that this can be a time that we can uh, use to just think about what is one more way that I can help support peace. It doesn't mean right away, you know, signing a DPCW or going to your heads of state and, you know, showing about DPCW, but even, you um, you know, showing a smile to a friend, saying I love you to someone, showing gratitude. Um, these are the type of habits that we can even create to make peace within ourselves and then be able to move um, towards this actionable items that we talked about. Um, but if there are any questions, we definitely want to connect more, um, share more, and even explain a little bit more about how we can make peace in our community. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much again, Camilla and Marianne, for being on the podcast and sharing. Um, mm. It's 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 something that people can also go and research upon to get more information on, which is good. Thank you so much again. And thank you to our listeners for listening to The Unfiltered by Jade. We will be back next week. Bam, bam, bide. Bam, bam, bide. Bam, bam, bide.